Was it just me or did Deion Sanders throw some shade toward Eli Drinkwitz? Plus, I haven't thrown out a lot of Missouri bets this season, but I do like the Tigers to cover against the Razorbacks, and I'll explain why coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy and hopefully I've got some easy money for you coming up on Friday though to be fair it rarely is all that easy over at FanDuel Sportsbook or anywhere else but I'll be honest with you I just feel like this is a great spot for Missouri against the Razorbacks and while I get the the stats I understand why while maybe on paper you might be thinking gee Missouri is nine and two the Razorbacks playing for basically nothing at this point Point, why isn't Missouri favored by more than eight and a half points? A good question, but the answer is actually pretty simple. The advanced statistics are going to like a team that loses closely to Alabama, for instance, as Arkansas did in Tuscaloosa just a few weeks ago. Arkansas lost to the Crimson Tide just by three points on the road. A close loss to Mississippi State recently. Again, a relatively close loss to Texas A&M, a three-point loss at LSU. So again, I'm not going to sit here and and put lipstick on a literal Razorback and say that this has been a great season for the pigs whatsoever. I get it. But at the same time, I understand what the statistical argument for Arkansas being about a touchdown underdog here, a little bit more than a touchdown. At the same time, I think Missouri is going to cover the spread here fairly easily because as, as I've pitched many times, I think the if you're going to put the occasional bet out there, number one, if you do, do it at FanDuel Sportsbook, of course. But if you're going to do it, do it against the grain and because and against the specific grain of the advanced statistics. Because while, again, I think obviously the stats are going to like those results despite the losses in Death Valley and Tuscaloosa that I just described to you, for instance, I just don't think the stats are going to be able to capture the spot that Arkansas is currently in. Now, over on Twitter, you may have noticed I've had some fun with Gator fans and Kansas State fans and Tennessee fans who are saying that, well, darn it, we lost, but ah, that was Missouri's Super Bowl, as if that's some sort of good excuse or whatever. But anyway, congrats to the three-time 2023 Super Bowl champions, your Missouri Tigers. But for real, though, if there was a a Super Bowl for anybody last week, I think it was Sam Pittman quite specifically. Or really, it was more of a loser leaves town match, to, to, to borrow an old wrestling phrase from the territory days. Because I truly believe that if Sam Pittman were to have lost to Florida International last week, that would have been it for the Sam Pittman era, and he would have been fired as Arkansas's head football coach. I think that's pretty obvious, in fact. I don't think that's a hot take whatsoever. When you put all the pieces together, Sam Pittman did not get the the ringing endorsement of the athletic director until after that victory. That tells me that he was holding back saying, you know what, I'm going to see how this FIU game goes, and if Arkansas at least wins comfortably, which they did about 44-20, to 20, I believe, well, then in that case, I guess we'll just move on and bring Sam Pittman back for one more season. And honestly, I think that's the right move. I think Arkansas would have been foolish to once again get on the new coach train. And if anything, 
a couple weeks into the season, I had people saying that I wasn't being negative enough and what is kind of a make or break season for Eli Drinkwitz in 2023. Well, obviously he passed this season with flying colors. I just don't think it's early enough for Arkansas fans to be saying, hey, Sam Pittman, it's time for, it's time for a loser leaves town match, essentially. I, I just thought that was too, too early. But at the same time, while I think this is the right move for the Razorbacks and their program to give Pittman another year, doesn't this kind of take away some of the potential motivation for, Mar- for Arkansas? Let's say they had fired Sam Pittman. Well, there'd be a bunch of players that – Yes, Sam Pittman was the guy who recruited them. They may love Sam Pittman, and even if they don't love Sam Pittman, anytime your coach is fired, that's obviously a negative reflection on you as a player as well. If you're a true competitor, as most of these guys are, you're going to take that a little bit personally. Well, that whole motivational angle of this game is now gone, in my opinion, for Arkansas. What do they have to play for whatsoever? Shouldn't Missouri actually be by far and away the more motivated ball club in this spot? In fact, actually, I was much more worried about the spot for Missouri last week against Florida because now coming off, you know, a couple tough weeks, obviously hard fought weeks, the Georgia week in particular, obviously tough to come back uh, from a, a week like that anytime. But now to me, obviously this has been, we're at the long end of a tough slog through the SEC here, but the difference is this is now week 12. Missouri can see the finish line now, quite literally. This is it. It will now be five or six weeks or so before Missouri has to actually play in its bowl game. So to me, you look at Missouri who wants to be in a New Year six bowl, right? They have to want that. They have to want to get that 10th win. To me, the difference between nine and 10 wins is, of course, literally just one win. But psychologically, I I think it means everything, really. It means a heck of a lot more than just one win to your program. Whether that's legitimate or not, that's how people psychologically work. They love that big double-digit number. It It looks pretty on a scoreboard. You have to admit that. But again, looking at this Arkansas team, while Sam Pittman is certainly going to be back next year, I think there's a big question if K.J. Jefferson, the Arkansas quarterback, is going to be back next season. How motivated is he going to be in this ball game? Maybe this is, maybe this is a, a showcase game for him, or maybe he's just going to be trying to stay healthy. I'm not really sure. All I know is I don't really think he's an NFL prospect But he is going to be a hot commodity if he enters the transfer portal. He could look good in an Auburn uniform, perhaps, somewhere like that. Obviously, Arkansas fans are going to want to see him transfer within the conference. I think that's a possibility. But I also think you listen to a lot of Arkansas people like John Neighbors over at Locked On Razorbacks, new offensive coordinator new offensive lineman in the transfer portal. I think all of this is very likely, this Arkansas offense in particular, that scored just three points on October 21st at home against Mississippi State. They need an entire overhaul, it would seem. So with all that being said, Rocket Sanders, who is probably out for this Missouri game, it's looking like he could hit the portal as well. What is this Arkansas team going to look like? I, I'm just wondering. I honestly think for this particular game, it would have been better for the Razorbacks if Sam Pittman would have been fired, although long-term, I think that would have been the wrong decision, at least in this moment. And coming up, did Deion Sanders throw a little bit of shade at Eli Drinkwitz? Definitely felt a little passive-aggressive based on some recent events involving Missouri and Colorado. So let's talk about that very interesting quote that was frankly a little mind-boggling in terms of hypocrisy by Coach Prime. So let's talk all about that, but first let's talk about prize picks because honestly a lot of times daily fantasy sports on other competitor sites needlessly elaborate in my opinion. So instead let's use the easiest and most popular daily fantasy 
platform in North America. It's prize picks where you simply pick two to six players from across leagues, across sports, whatever you want, and simply go more or less on their totals statistically. For example, you can throw KJ Jefferson of Arkansas and Brady Cook into the same action and go either more or less. It really is as simple as that. So here's what you got to do. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. For your second listen, why not flip over on YouTube to Locked On Sports today for the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. It's Locked On Sports today on YouTube. And let's get to Coach Prime. And again, some recent events here a couple days ago, Talon Chandler An offensive lineman from Nevada, Missouri. Yes, that's right for all of you people outside of Missouri. It's Nevada, not Nevada. We have a lot of unique pronunciations here in this state without question. But Talon Chandler, obviously an in-state guy, was committed to the Buffaloes of Colorado this past summer. Well, a couple days ago, he decommitted from Colorado and committed to the Missouri Tigers. So that got me thinking a little bit when Coach Prime the other day was talking about the recruiting process and specifically on kids who decommit before signing day. He said, quote, a kid ain't even faithful to his girlfriend. You think he's going to be faithful to a school? That's an emotional thing. What I wish the NCAA would do is if you commit somewhere, you can't go on other visits. One thing about it, we're not an ATM. That's not going to happen here. You're not coming here to get rich unless you're coming here to go to the NFL and get your degree. Now, I just thought this was kind of amusing, to be honest, because number one, for Deion Sanders to go here is pretty incredible. I'll be honest, when he first showed up at Colorado and essentially was telling all the players on last year's team, hey, a lot of y'all ain't going to be coming back next season. In other words, your scholarship is not really worth a whole lot. It's, it's a year-to-year thing at this point. Oh, you're going to be going here forever? That's not really the deal anymore. Well, frankly, it's been that way throughout major college football and basketball at a lot of different schools for a long time, including Missouri, quite possibly and quite honestly in many cases. So I'm not going to sit here and clutch my pearls But it's just for for Coach Prime to then complain about, oh, kids are going to decommit and, oh, we shouldn't let them take visits and that kind of thing. That's some pretty unbelievable hypocrisy on his part. And for the most part, I've been on Coach Prime's side in terms of, hey, he wants to come in, shake things up, be sort of real with kids in an NIL world where you can make money and all that stuff. He's going to treat them like adults and like they're semi-professionals in a semi-professional world. Well, I'm okay with that. At the same time, the other side of that process is, yes, Guys can now transfer freely, and as they always have been able to do, by the way, they can always decommit during the process. Sometimes that goes against you. Sometimes it goes for you. Obviously, Luther Burden and Jeremy Macklin were committed to Oklahoma at one point, and now we can't think of them as anything other than true sons. This has obviously gone against Missouri in other cases. I can't really think of one off the top of my head, of course, because, again, the point is, When those guys leave, they sort of leave forever. They leave your consciousness almost. It's sort of like, okay, I guess Tyler Hansborough from the basketball side would be a decent example. I don't know that he ever committed to Missouri per se. I just think there was a lot of a a good chance if, for instance, let's say he did commit to Missouri and then Quinn Snyder is fired. Is he supposed to be what? So in other words, Coach Prime can shove guys out the door, but hey, wait a second. If you give me your word, then all of a sudden that's your bond. I don't know. I just thought that was disappointing there from Coach Prime. And honestly, kind of an emotional reaction by him is the irony of that situation. 
his whole thing about, oh, well, we're not going to be an ATM here. I'm sorry, welcome to modern day college football. And this really sounds mostly like a lot of sour grapes from a guy who was trying to was basically inviting all the rappers in the world and Dwayne The Rock Johnson and all these celebrity people onto the sidelines. Well, now that his team is suddenly not so sexy anymore with a sub-500 record, you know, those people are not flocking there. Perhaps the NIL money and attendance is drying up. I don't know. I haven't watched a Colorado Buffalo game recently like a lot of you out there, I'm sure. Their ratings have been plummeting. So, To me, this sounds like total sour grapes by Deion Sanders, though, to be honest here, I find it a little hard to believe that he's actually calling out Eli Drinkwitz specifically here because is this really a name, image, and likeness flip here by Talon Chandler, a guy who's a three-star offensive lineman? According to 24-7, really Colorado was by far his most significant offer when he committed this past summer. So just the fact that Missouri came in, the the home state came in a little later and came in more interested, Missouri coming off of what may well be a 10-2 season if they take care of business against Arkansas this Friday – I mean, you can see all the reasons in the world why he, why he might flip there, and it doesn't strike me that Missouri's going to have to pay like a ton of money to get that kid to flip, a kid from Nevada, Missouri. Again, a three-star offensive lineman. We're not talking about Ryan Wingo or Williams Winery here. No, no offense to Taylor Chandler whatsoever. He might end up being a great player. Who the heck knows? I'm just saying at this point in time, he's not going to have that type of of value, I don't believe, in the NIL market. So while I don't really think this was specific to Coach Prime calling out Eli Drinkwitz or anything, I did think it was rather interesting timing. And coming up on this Thanksgiving Eve, it feels quite appropriate to give some thanks out to this Missouri football team, including most notably Brady Cook, in my opinion, but several other Tigers as well and also what do i want to see from missouri basketball tonight as they take on south carolina state this evening at six o'clock that coming up here in just a minute but first let's talk about linkedin jobs because these these days excuse me every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business you want to be a hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates on the market That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs because they help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you have to do is add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your current LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And with simple tools like screening questions, they make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So I don't personally know Brady Cook, never said one word to him in my entire life, but The feeling I get about Cook is obviously he's a really, really good leader, I think. And part of that leadership is he's an incredibly positive human being. That's what that's one thing. That's the vibe that I get from Brady Cook anyway. But after the Kansas State game, when Brady Cook basically said, you know, it'd be nice if I could get a little more support from Missouri fans overall. You could hear a little bit of of pain in his voice there, in those words that, yeah, those those words, the the negativity from a lot of Missouri fans that previous season and that subsequent offseason there definitely hurt him a little bit. And But fortunately for us as Missouri fans, that was really about the only negativity you heard from Brady Cook the entire season. And if anything, all you saw after every Missouri victory – especially after this Florida victory was Brady Cook jumping up into the crowd basically and embracing the fans, embracing the students in particular, but all of us too, all of us alums and message board warriors and YouTube and Twitter idiots. Yes, all of us 
all podcasters <laughs> with big mouths, all of us, we all got embraced by Brady Cook anyway. And, you know, honestly, just, again, the spirit of Thanksgiving, thank you to Brady Cook for not giving up on this program, for a program that you grew up loving and that for a while, maybe it didn't seem like it was loving you back because, boy, this offseason, I heard a lot of things about Brady Cook, and the best of them was that, well, he's kind of a game manager. Those were the nice things that people said about Brady Cook. The worst of it was that he was terrible, and oh, he can't play in the SEC. Heck, he's not even a Division I caliber quarterback, which to me was always an asinine statement. I never believed that for one second. But to be honest, though, even I, as I think I would want to have been one of Brady Cook's biggest public supporters, I don't think I would have believed what I would have seen this season. The type of, type of game that Brady Cook had, uh, Missouri 9-2 and two as we sit here, possibly getting to double digits if Missouri takes care of business on Friday. But either way, just an incredible season for Cook and Missouri. And obviously, it doesn't happen without him and his just tremendous mental fortitude, in my opinion, and his physical fortitude as well, fighting back from a torn labrum, fighting through it the entire season last year without getting it surgically repaired, gets it surgically repaired this offseason and comes back even better than before, improves his mechanics and shows that he's the same type of elusive and tough runner, by the way, that he's always been in a Missouri uniform. So Brady Cook, thanks for being a Missouri fan. Thanks for coming here, and thanks for sticking it out this entire time when so many quarterbacks, when they found themselves as the second or third guy on the depth chart, would have transferred somebody, somewhere else, and, and quite understandably as well. If Brady Cook had transferred a couple years ago, who would have even blamed him whatsoever? But he stuck it out with us, and isn't it not just beautiful to see a, a kid who seems like a really good, solid young man, again, a good leader, a positive human being, a positive member of the Mizzou and, and Columbia communities, to see him put in all that hard work and to get it pay off, and for all the people who doubted him and said he was terrible or whatever, for them to have to go, you know what, I think I was wrong about old Brady Cook, and for them to have to give him a big old applause, you know, the, these past few days, and obviously next season should be a great season for Brady Cook and the Missouri offense as well. It's just so gratifying to see, frankly, one of the most gratifying things I've ever seen as a Missouri fan, and obviously just this whole season in general, Cody Schrader's whole story. Thank you, Cody Schrader, for being the incredibly hard worker that you are. Not only being able to just take all the carries that he can take on the field, but by all accounts, off the field. Just an incredible Brock Olivo-like work ethic. According to Drinkwitz, just the guy was just attacking you know, rehab on his, his, his injured quad during the season like nothing he'd ever seen before. So Cody Schrader... Thank you for believing in yourself and believing in this program and being one heck of a running back, one of, one of the best I've ever seen put on a Missouri uniform. Thank you to Luther Burden for having faith in this program. I mentioned that Luther initially committed to the University of Oklahoma in the recruiting process. Well, obviously, Luther Burden was not a Brady Cook or John Miller like Missouri fan growing up. But that's okay because, by golly, he got here one way or the other. And now, after just two years, you know you can just tell that kid is Mizzou made forever. And everybody on this team, to me, I, I think that's another lesson, too, I think I've learned this season is, you know, the transfer portal, it just doesn't matter quite as much as I thought it was going to when all this first started going down, the free-for-all, as, as I might have called it. You know, it just doesn't matter to me as much as I thought it would because, you know, obviously it hurt at the time to lose guys like Dominic, w Do excuse me, Dominic Wingo, Dominic Lovett and Makai Wingo. Obviously that hurt at the time. In the long term, you know what? It doesn't bother me that much. It really doesn't. And I really would be a giant hypocrite if I embraced guys like Tyron Hopper and Josh Landry and Chuck Hicks and various other guys who have transferred from other programs, Jay Jernigan, guys who have played immediately and big, huge contributors, Christian Williams, more guys just keep popping into my head, Mookie Cooper from Ohio State. 
you know, I can't like these guys and then absolutely hate the other guys, even though, you know, football fans are irrational. I get that. I don't know. As I get here into middle age, I'm getting a lot more, I don't know, level headed with that type of stuff. So to me in general, just thanks to everybody on this Mizzou football team this year, Chris Abrams drain. Ennis Rakestraw, Hopper, Eli Drinkwitz, Chad Bailey, Javon Foster, Connor, Connor Tolleson. I mean, I could just go on and on and on here. I'm not going to name everybody on the team, but honestly, everybody on the team does deserve a mention this year because that was this special of a season to this podcaster to be able to get to experience it with my parents once again, to be able to get to experience the last game with my daughter and and my wife and just the whole thing. It's just a beautiful experience. And by the way, shout out to Emily, our very first golden girl from Commotion Dance. That was really fun to get to see young freshman Emily out there doing her thing on the home games as well. So just a really fun season on a billion different levels. And I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in the Missouri football program. Thanks to Desiree Reed Francois for making it a fun experience this season. And to everybody out there who works the game, works, you know, feeds us, feeds us drinks, the whole deal. Thanks to everybody. It was a great season. And with all that being said, I am John Miller. And thanks to all of you for listening to Locked on Mizzou.